my brothers and sisters, I want to thank y'all once again for allowing me to stand before y'all. I told y'all, probably said every time that I come before y'all, is that as a kid I saw myself bringing the gospel. I just thank the Lord that I didn't get caught up in bringing it the way they do in the Sunday church. Because when I was a child, I had a passion to preach the gospel, but I just didn't know it was going to be this. Mm, wow. You know, I thought it was going to be somebody playing that organ when I started getting happy. <laughs> you know, and they get on that organ, that organ start going, next thing you know, the church going crazy, people running around the church. <laughs> that was that kind of so I thought I had the power to do that, but I thank the Lord that he allowed me to come into the truth and preach the gospel the right way. Amen. So what we want to do, brothers and sisters, um, we want to deal with a lesson today. The title of this lesson is called Controlled Anger or the Lake of Fire. And the reason why I want to deal with this lesson is because uh, I know that a lot of us may be dealing with certain issues as far as our temper go, as far as how we talk to people, as far as how we deal with certain situations, where, where they may be at home, at work, or just, you know, with friends in general. And um, I can tell you, I can be honest with you, I ain't got a problem with that because before I came under the blood, you know, whatever, whatever happened before I came under the blood is what happened before I came under the blood. Now that I came under the blood of Jesus, so that old man is past. But I had a temper, a bad temper. And I think my temper stemmed when I was 16 years old. I saw one of my best friends when the neighbors came out and said something to us about playing football on the lawn. And I saw my friend just go from, I mean, he snapped quick. And in my mind, I said, I was like, oh, so that's how you get things done. So I picked it up. I was like, I'm going to start snapping quick. The next thing you know, that became a part of me. I couldn't get rid of it. You know, and as time goes on, you start realizing, man, that's not the way to deal with things because as we see today, as we go throughout the lesson today, we're going to see a lot of people end up dying. A lot of people end up getting killed because they can't control that tongue. They can't control that anger. You know, and one of the things we got to do is make sure that we keep that anger under control because you can offend people if you ain't got an anger, anger in life. And as we grow as a church, as we come together and try to get this thing uh, uh, set it right according to the way the Lord wants us to do it, one of the things we got to have in control is anger. Because if you don't have anger under control, next thing you know, you're going to start sinning. And then once you start sinning, you know, you're probably going to get out there so far where it's hard to turn around. But if you can just brighten that tongue before it gets too far out of hand, then you can go ahead, you can save a lot of people from being hurt. You can keep yourself out of a lot of situations. I mean, just imagine when we tell a lot of our young, our young, uh, our young kids, the, the young boys out here on the radio station all the time, you know, you just get, up, get put over by the police. Even if you're doing something wrong or right, just keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep your mouth shut. Don't say nothing. Amen. And I learned that as I got older, man. Just keep your mouth shut. My mom used to tell me all the time, your mouth going to get you killed. And I didn't understand what she was saying. As a matter of fact, I talked so much, even when she would say that, I said, no, it won't. No, it's not going to get me killed. <laughs> she was like, your mouth going get, to get you killed. You talk back to me. No, it ain't. I remember the, 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 the sergeant told me in the military. You ain't going to make it in the military. I said, yes, I am. Yeah, I am today. I got out like a year later. <laughs> you know? Because that mouth, that mouth, and that mouth represents your attitude. Whatever's in your heart, brother and sister, whatever you think, usually comes out of your mouth during conversation. When you get mad, it comes out. So our job is, as Bible Christians is to make sure we get that tongue under control. Whether you be a child, whether you be an adult, whether you be an elderly person. Because we're going to see today that this thing, this, this curse of anger, or this emotion of anger is on everybody. And if you ain't got it under control, then it becomes a curse. So we're going to look at somebody who led us, uh, they gave us a great example during this time of temptation and showed us how he overcame it. So we can't have no reason to say that we can't make it, that we can't control our anger. So we're going to start this off. My reader today is uh, Brother Tobias. I'm Brother Nathan. Like I say, the title of the lesson is Controlled Anger or the Lake of Fire. We're going to do something a little different today, too, so we ain't that traditional. All right, we're going to do some things a little different. Um, you know, I want to get y'all involved. All right, so we're we going we gonna to see how that goes. But we're going to start up in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, and we're going to see that there's an account being given to the Hebrews, how they should carry themselves. Hebrews chapter 2, and <coughs> verse 9. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. What you about? Okay. Now, verse 9, come on. But we see Jesus, 
who was made a little lower than the angels for, uh, for the suffering of death. So we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. So right off the bat, we see that he was made lower. So if he was made lower, that means he had to come down from where he was. That's just like some of us at a job. We got to take a pay cut or we got to get demoted in order for the job or the business to stay open. First thing we say, man, I've been here forever. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't taking no pay cut. I'll go find a job somewhere else. But we see Jesus had to come down and be made a little lower. That's right. And if you keep your tongue under control, you understand that the company don't want to get rid of you. But by them trying to save money so they ain't got to go out of business, they just come to you and say, can you take a dollar cut? Or we just have to, you know, put you in a, another position where we ain't paying so much. But we got so much pride. But even Jesus here, he was made a little lower than the angels. And if you think about it, during the time we're in the day, sometimes you might have to take the pay cut. Or you might have to take the demotion. It ain't, it ain't like it was 20 years ago. You can go out here and get another job if you lose one. So now today you really have to humble yourself. But we see it like the, the book says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Come on. Crowned with glory and honor. Uh-huh. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Go ahead. For it became him for whom all are things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Right, so we see that he had to suffer. <clears throat> he suffered and went through what he went through for who? Us. So it, be, it should be an issue when you got to keep your tongue when you're dealing with your brothers and sisters. Even when you're dealing with people out in the world. They say something that hurts you, keep your tongue. Right. He had to suffer and keep, he had to die for us, he, had, he didn't have to come down here and do this. So it should be a problem for you to keep your mouth shut when we go on, when, when people offend you. But we're going to look more and more to the scripture, you're going to see what our duty is and how we're supposed to carry ourselves. Let's get down to verse 17 and come on. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to, uh -huh. be made, to be made like unto his brother. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Uh huh. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted. So he was tempted also. <clears throat> he suffered being tempted. And we're going to be tempted also in the time we in the day. Go ahead and read. He is able to secure them that are tempted. So he understands what you go to. When you go through your temptation, he's able to save you out of that because he went through it also. So there's no excuse, brothers and sisters. You can't say, I can't do it. The one that came down on this earth to die for our sins went through it. We read it. So he's able to save you through your temptation. Let's go to James chapter 1. That's one book over to the right. James chapter 1. And verse 12. And come on. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Uh huh. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Go ahead. Which the Lord hath promised to them to love him. Okay, go ahead. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried. 13, 13. Oh, sorry. No, no, 13. That's okay. Let no man say when he is tempted, uh -huh. I am tempted of God. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil, uh -huh. neither tempted he any man. That's right. So don't say the Lord made you hit your wife. Don't say the Lord made me, the Lord made me cuss him out. He just was, he just kept on provoking me. He just kept on getting at me. She kept getting under my skin, so I hid in the faith. Don't put that on the Lord. They say, blessed is the man that endured temptation. That's right. So you know how to walk away from that situation, wherever it's at. What we got, bro? 15, 14. Go ahead. But every man is tempted uh -huh. when he is drawn away of his own lust Go ahead. and enticed. Right, so when you take upon yourself to try to handle things yourself, when you let that anger build up in you, then that's when you become enticed. That's when you do things outside of the Word of God. And then you, next thing you know, you start a snowball effect. Uh -huh. Guy get pulled over, coming home from work, police pull him over, all he want to ask him is, Hey man, you gotta bust a tail. First thing that he said, man, what you put him over for? What? Calm down, sir. Calm down, sir. Wait, what you put him over for, man? I ain't did nothing. You're always messing with people. Calm down, sir. Keep on running his mouth. Next thing you know, he in back of the police car. Yep. Next thing you know, he go to jail. Yep. Then he done miss work. Mm -hmm. Now he done lost his job. Mm -hmm. Now his family, they done lost their house. Mm -hmm. yep. Now his wife and kids gotta go stay with his mother. And then the marriage ended up breaking up. You know That's why? Right. Because you can't control your time. Right. All you gotta do is keep your mouth shut. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be harsh when I say keep your mouth shut. Well, you just gotta call like this. Keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Brighten your tongue. Mm -hmm. Know when to speak and when not to speak. Okay. If you keep your mouth closed, you can discern what it is you need to say. Mm -hmm. And if you keep your mouth closed, the Holy Spirit will tell you when to say and when to give an answer and when not to. Okay. And believe me, brother, since I'm, getting, I'm being cut as I speak. <clears throat> 
That's why I ain't really want to do this lesson. <laughs> I really ain't want to do it, man, because it also hurts to know that, like I told you last time, every time I pick this book up and I see myself doing a lesson, I keep on looking in the mirror. So the more I look in the mirror, the more I say, man, I, I, can't, I, I can't walk this way. I can't respond the same way you should respond. Because we are held to a different standard. Mm -hmm. So where we at, brother? 15. 15? Go ahead and read. Then when lust hath conceived, uh -huh. bring it forth sin. Go ahead. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. So then we see that when lust hath conceived, it bring it forth sin. So we see that he got pulled on by the police. Then he ended up, he ended up running his mouth. Now he in jail. Now his wife and kids got to go stay at the mom. Now the marriage ended up breaking up. Now she go get another husband. He go get another wife. <laughs> All because he couldn't keep, keep him mouth shut. Now everybody sinning. Because you had to say something. Alright, where we at? That's the end of that? I know that we're going to 1 Corinthians 10 13. 1 Corinthians 10 13. Alright, brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is coming to man. That's right. There hath no tempt temptation taken you but such as is coming to man. Come on. But God is faithful. Uh huh. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Go ahead. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Uh huh. That ye may be able to bear it. That's right. So that's what we got to understand. He's going to make a way for you to get out of. And one of the main ways to get out of things before it get out of hand is just to be quiet. <clears throat> Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing, man. But I understand a lot of us deal with these. You know, I for one, sometimes, like I was telling my brother the other day, sometimes you can be so set on showing somebody that, that you're real about what it is you do that you can hurt people in the, in the, in the long run. Because you're trying to correct them and show them that you're right or you show them that you are, I, I don't burn people, I don't do this and I don't do that. But at the same time, you can end up hurting people or you can end up causing situations to get out of control. And that's what we got to be careful of. Where we at, brother? Let's go to first Corinthians. Bring right back over to 9, chapter 9, verse 24. Stay in Corinthians and pick it up at chapter 9 and verse 24. And go ahead. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? That's right, come on. But one receiveth the prize? Go ahead. So run that ye may obtain. That's right. So what he said, Paul saying right here, run that ye may obtain. That means you ain't got it. Run that you may obtain. It didn't say run that you already got it. Run that you may obtain. So everything is falling up under this running. Dealing with anger, malice, wrath. Getting all this under subjection. We running this thing all the way to the end until we get that prize at the end of this thing. Go ahead and read. 25. Uh-huh. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate. Got restraint. He can hold himself. He can keep that tongue. Go ahead and read. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. So they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, something where they're going to get an immediate reward. That's what the world do it for. Mm -hmm. But what we do it for, brother, come on. But we and uncorruptible. So that's what we're trying to get. Now, uh, uh, uncorruptible, uh, uncorruptible crown or incorruptible crown, that's the everlasting life. That's right. That's what we're trying to get. That's right. So let's go to Proverbs 16. Oh, yeah, go ahead and read that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead and read that. Hold on one second. 26. Come on. 26. Uh-huh. I therefore so run. So Paul said, I therefore so run. Go ahead. Not as uncertainty. Not as uncertainty. Go ahead. So fight I. Uh-huh. Not as one that beateth the air. That's right. He ain't just sparring with the air. Some he, what he's doing, we doing this for me. This has some, this has some a reward at the end of this That's thing. That's right. We ain't just doing this for nothing. Like a lot of people in the world, you know, when they go to church and when they take part in the things that have nothing to do with the Bible, they're doing it for nothing. That's right. But we're doing this to receive a reward at the end. Come on. 27. Uh huh. But I keep under my body. So we keep under our, his body. He said, I keep under my body. Go ahead. And bring it into subjection. Uh huh. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castor. That's right. So Paul let you know he ain't got it. And I'm letting you know we ain't got it either. You don't want to be a castaway before the Lord or before people. You tell them what they, you bringing them the book and tell them what they're supposed to do, but yes, then we cutting up. So next time you go around them to try to teach them what they're supposed to do, they say, man, nah, man, you, you, you're doing the same thing they're doing in the Sunday church. That's right. You're a castaway now. And we got to be careful of that because we spit on the name of Christ. 
We that came out of the blood of Jesus, we say that we represent him, and we that came into that covenant, we can't do this thing, the things as it were. That's we can't, we just can't do it. Right. Now the people that's in the world that, that don't have understanding, then they get a pass. That's why he say, in the times of your ignorance, I went back. God went back. So when we was ignorant, he went back. But once we make this covenant, we get this understanding, we come into the word of God, there's no more playing mm -hmm. with the word of God. So you got to get everything under control, especially the anger. That's the first one. We're going to read later on in the, in the lesson. Uh, it's going to be a different list of things that's going to be listed what we need to work on. And anger going to be the first one. Anger going to be the first one. You finished with that, brother? Yes, sir. Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 32. One verse. Go ahead. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Mm -hmm. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. Right, so a man can go into a city and take the city, but a man that's slow to anger and a man that ruleth his spirit, he's better than him. Why? Because he know how to discern things. He know how to keep his mouth shut. He know how to pay attention to things around him. That's right. A man with a, a man that's going to take the city, he got his boys with him. <laughs> so how would he act by himself? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? How would he act by himself? Is he gonna talk the same? Uh, is he gonna talk the same amount that he does when he got his army? No, oh, he gonna run. He probably gonna run, right? <laughs> so why has man to know how to say, "Hey, man, hey, I know how to pick my battle, my battle, man. I'm gonna go ahead and go the opposite way, man." And he lived to see another thing. He lived to see another thing. Let's go back over to James. James chapter one. To the law and to the testimony. That's what we're doing, brothers and sisters. To the law and to the testimony. So, this ain't nothing new for us, right? We know how to go back and forth between the books, right? Amen. Right? All right. <laughs> James 1 and 19. What you got, bro? Wherefore, uh -huh. my beloved brother, go ahead. Let every man be swift to hear. Be swift to hear. Mm. Not swift to speak, mm. swift to hear. Mm. Go ahead. Slow to speak. Slow to speak, come on. Slow to wrath. Uh-huh. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So that's why I was saying earlier, man, we gotta learn how to just be quiet. Learn how to just listen. Somebody can ask you a question. It can't be offensive, but it's what you can deal with. All you gotta do is say, man, listen, man, hey, I can't deal with it. Right now that, 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 that question offended me, and I won't I, I don't want to deal with it. That's it, and just walk away. That's it. You don't want to be known for every time something come out your mouth, you're cussing people out. You understand? That's what we don't want to be known for. We got to get this thing in line, man, because if we going to do something according to the book, this is one of the major areas that we got to deal with. Brother Nate ain't the only one to deal with it. It's a lot of people in Israel deal with this. A lot of people looking for places to go because they being hurt. Because of what somebody said. And we can't keep on doing the same thing. Amen. This love got to be pure all the way throughout. And it starts with what come out your mouth. Mm -hmm. Where we at, brother? We just finished that. Okay. So let's go over to uh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Pick it up. Verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 22. Come on, brother. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. That's right. So he's talking to the Gentiles, telling them what it is they're supposed to do. He said, put off the put off concerning the, 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 the concerning the former the, put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Come on. Which is corrupt. Which is corrupt. According to the deceitfulness uh -huh. lust. And he and excuse me. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man, uh -huh. which after God is created in righteousness Go and true holiness. Go ahead. Wherefore, putting away lying. Putting away lying. Uh -huh. Speak every man truth uh -huh. with his neighbor. Go ahead. For we are members one of another. That's right, brother. So we are members one of another. So all lying, all that, right? that got to be done. That got to be done with it. Mm -hmm. As people come, they're going to come with a lot of their issues. Mm -hmm. and we can't do it. We just can't do it. We're not in this thing to make friends that's going to get us in the lake of fire. <coughs> Our friends is what? The ones that keep the law, statutes, and the commandments. That's right. Mm -hmm. So they got to be willing to keep what the book says. If they can't keep what the book says, you ain't got to tell the ruler. 
You just tell them, man, we, we, we don't deal with that over there, man. Mm-hmm. We don't deal with that over there. Somebody got to set an example. That's right. Somebody got to set an example. And it's sad that every time Israel gets something, they always drop the ball. Mm-hmm. Always drop the ball. Because we're always trying to do our own righteousness. Mm-hmm. We want to do this here and then change things over here. But we can't dismiss what's in the book. Amen. Go ahead and read, brother. 26. Uh-huh. Be ye angry. Be ye angry. So it's okay to be angry, but what's, what, what that, you got to stop this anger at a point. What does it say? And sin not. And sin not. Mm-hmm. So it's okay to be angry. Let that anger cause you to do things good. If somebody dealing with you outside, them, like, matter of fact, I'll give you an example. We go out to the street a lot. And I remember back when I first started hitting the streets and brothers, uh, brothers and sisters come to me and try to ask me things about the scripture. I'd be upset. i get real upset. But I made sure I went back and studied so the next time I ran into the situation, I got you. Mm-hmm. Be ye angry and sin not. But what's the next thing you say after that, brother? Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. So I don't care if somebody make you upset. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Right. Your job is to let not the sun go down. I don't care if he apologized, she apologized. When that sun go down, it's over with. Mm-hmm. It's done. Don't wait for him to apologize. Don't wait for her to apologize. It's over at sundown. Mm-hmm. It's over at sundown. No matter where it's at. I don't care if it's if somebody, one of your friends call you to make you upset. If it's happening in your household at sundown, it's over with. This in the book. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Be ye angry and sin not. So guess what? If you do take this past the next day, now you're not going to step in the sin. And that's what we got to understand, brother and sister. Us having the, us having the law, statutes, and commandments, and being uh, now given back the way to eternal life, don't just consist of the things that we want to do because that flesh is getting in the way and saying, oh, he hurt me, or she made me mad. The book say, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means you got to drop it at sundown. It ain't say, let not the sun go down upon your wrath and wait for somebody to apologize. <laughs> it don't say that. <clears throat> that ain't what we read right here. That's right. So as we go forward and set this thing up, brothers and sisters, this is the thing we have to live by. Because when we start letting things go on, the next thing you know, it start marinating. Mm-hmm. It start marinating. The next thing you know, it go, it get, it get up to this brother. Then it get into the sister. Then it keep passing on. The next thing you know, we got the vision. Yeah. We got the vision, man. But nobody wants to do what the book say. And I tell, I'll be honest with you. If you're doing what the book say, and you're living by the book, the person who offended somebody, the Lord is going to get them. They don't know what to do if they're doing what the book say. They're going to come to you and say, well, I'm sorry for what happened. Mm-hmm. If they're doing what the book say, right? Mm-hmm. If we're doing what the book say, then it shouldn't be no problem. Why? Because pride ain't in the way. That's right. What's wrong with going to your brother and sister and letting them know I was wrong for her? You feel ain't nothing wrong with that. Because that's supposed to be your friend. That's supposed to be your brother or your sister. Where we at? We finished that one. All right, let's go to Proverbs 27 and 4. Proverbs chapter 27. Wrath is cruel. Uh huh. <clears throat> and anger is outrageous. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Who is able to stand before jealousy? We know jealousy. Jealousy, uh, one of the, one of the brothers said today, uh, we was just watching. I hadn't thought about this. I hadn't thought about this example. Now, Cain and Abel. Who is able to stand before envy? Cain was jealous because his often was like Abel. So, what did he have him killed? Think about some of the relationships you know people are uh, uh, dealing with. I think there was an incident in, in Florida, in Tampa, and a guy went up to the cell phone place. I can't remember the name. It might have been Radio Shack. And went in there and burnt his girlfriend up. I mean, pulled gasoline on the set on fire because of jealousy. So this is what we got to make sure we don't allow it to take place in us. Jealousy. We shouldn't have no reason to be jealous in a couple in nobody else's house. We shouldn't have no reason to be doing it. But like the book say, wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Verse 5 and come on. Oh, it ain't show up on here. Read verse 5, Paul. Read verse 5? Mm-hmm. I well, I read <laughs> Open rebuke is better than secret love. <clears throat> so if somebody offend you, man, go ahead and tell them. Tell them right then. I'll get, get on the phone and say, look, man, I appreciate you doing that. Now, look, sister, that hurt my feelings. I appreciate that. Don't just let it ride. 
then you let it ride and you and cause it says open rebu re rebuke is better than secret love. You love them so you ain't gonna say nothing. Mm. It'd be better for you to say something so they don't do it again. That's right. Mm -hmm. But always remember it's a way to say things. Mm -hmm. It's a way to say things. That's what I'm learning, brother and sister. It's a way to say things. Mm -hmm. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I'll be I'll be so caught up in being, you know, straight to the point that you forget about people's feelings, man. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna do that. People have feelings, man, we have to be mindful of that. But if you got your, your anger under control, you're going to sit back and you're going to be wise about what it is you say. And when you say it, you'll pull them to the side. And if they're doing things right, they're going to receive you. They're going to receive, or they're going to do what the book said. They're going to forgive you. And then by sundown, it's over. Y'all move on. That's right. Let's go with Ecclesiastes 7. <coughs> Ecclesiastes 7. So it's just a basic lesson today, but it's just something you don't want to forget about as we start to move forward, as we get closer and closer toward the coming of the Lord. Because the Lord is very serious about this loving your brother, man. On what? On these? On these two? Hang all the law? So he's very serious about this loving your brother, how we treat each other, man. You know, how we talk to each other. He's very serious about this. And we got to understand that. Verse 9, come on. Be not hasty in thy spirit be to be angry. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. So as soon as somebody say something to you, you just fly off the handle. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry. Come on. For anger resteth in the bosom of food. That's right. Every time you go around, they always angry. They always fuss. Every time they come around, they bring in trouble. So if y'all see that, you got to get from around those type of people. But make sure you ain't the one that's being hasty in your spirit to be angry. That's Can't right. nobody talk to you. That's right. We're going to give you an example of somebody in the book that was like that. So let's go to Proverbs 7, 27, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Matthew 7 and 1. Matthew 7 and verse 1. Matthew 7 and verse 1. And go ahead. Judge not. Uh -huh. That ye be not judged. That's right, go ahead. For with what judgment ye judge, uh -huh. ye shall be judged. Go ahead. And with what measure ye meet, uh -huh. it shall be measured to you again. That's right. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, uh -huh. but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? That's right. Mm -hmm. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thine eye, uh -huh. and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. And that's what we gotta understand, brother, since we all have issues that we deal with. Mm -hmm. One of mine is angry. Okay? <laughs> I'm dealing with it right now. <laughs> I'm a lot better than I was. But we all have different issues that we have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? But I see this, and those are things I, I should work on first before I try to correct anybody else. That's right. You understand? We all have issues. You know how I know we got issues? Because we're still in the flesh. That's right. Man. We're working toward perfection. That's right. Y'all got to put your issues out there. I'm not ignorant. I was born at night, but not last night. Ain't what it's saying. <laughs> you know, everybody got issues now. Everybody got things they're dealing with. You know, but we just got to make sure we try our best to correct the one, the issues that we have. And then you go to your brother and let him know, hey man, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's right. And that brother can't say to you, well, what about you? <coughs> what you doing? <laughs> you done turned into a castaway just like he did. <laughs> Both of y'all doing the same thing. That's right. Go ahead and read. Five. Uh-huh. Thou hypocrite. No, what do you say? Thou hypocrite. Thou hypocrite. What do you say after that? Come on. First cast out the beam of thine own eye, uh -huh. and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. That's right, brother. So we just keep the word of the Lord, then everything will run smoothly. That's right. If you if you worried about what's in your lane, then you won't hit nobody else in your lane. Stay in your own lane. Stay in your own lane. That's it. If you stay in your lane, everybody stay in their lane, then ain't nobody going to come to you and say, Brother Nate, you're doing this, you're doing that. I ain't going to come to you and say, Brother Amos, you're doing this. I won't say, Brother Tobias, you're doing it. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna brother the monkey doing it. We won't have to do that if everybody doing what it is according to the Bible. Amen. Even if we do make a mistake, then guess what? I should know my part to come to that brother or sister and correct myself. Mm -hmm. That's right. But what happens is when you shut that book, man, we get caught up in our own righteousness, mm -hmm. our own lustfulness, and deceitfulness. Well, he shouldn't have said that to me. Or she shouldn't have said that to me. Or that hurt my feelings. I ain't got nothing to say to him. Then we start pouting. Then we don't want to have nothing to do with it. <clears throat> And next thing you know, we done start planting seeds of discord in the church. Mm -hmm. So true. And that's what we got to stop, man. We have to stop the discord. Yeah. 
That's it of that? That's finished. Proverbs 14 and 17. Proverbs 14 and 17. He that is soon angry dealeth He that foolish. is soon angry dealeth, dealeth foolish. They don't think about what it is they do. They just get mad and make bad decisions mm -hmm. and worry about the consequences later. Mm -hmm. So the book said, He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Go ahead. And the man of wicked devices is hate. And the man of wicked devices is hate. Not by the world, but by the righteous. That's right. Don't nobody want to have nothing to do with you. <laughs> These wicked devices are what? Wicked intentions. Everything they do, nothing but wicked intention. But I want to give you an example of something. I want one of the kids, if, 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 if it's okay. One of the kids, because I told you I want to do something a little different. I want, I want the kids to get involved in this. Because this is dealing with a 19 year old. Can you read it for me there? Oh, well, one of y'all? No matter. But I just know that I don't mind my son doing it. So I want you to read something for me. Read the article for me. And read, read the date on them. No. We want to, come here. And we want to show y'all. <coughs> In verse 17 where it says, he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. So let's see some of the actions that take place when you deal foolishly. Give me the date on it. What's the date on it? Uh, April 7th, 2012. Okay, 2012. So this is a couple days ago, right? Lift it up so you can read them high. Now go ahead and read that. North, North Charleston police have named a suspect in a deadly shooting that happened late Friday night. Uh-huh. Police have issued warrants for the arrest of a 19-year-old named Torn Edie. Right, for a 19-year-old, Torn Edie, go ahead. Around 11 p.m., officers responded to a home on Success Street. Success Street, uh huh. To investigate a possible shooting. Go ahead. At the scene, police found one person shot on the porch and another shot inside the front door. Uh huh. Both were rushed to the MUSC where one of them died a short time later. Okay, so this 19-year-old time of Edie went to my house and shot somebody, so somebody dead now. Go ahead. The coroner's office has identified the victim killed as 21-year-old Adrian King. Uh-huh. The second victim did not suffer life-threatening injury. Come on. North Charleston Police Department spokesman Spencer Pryor said, Investigators said Edie came to the home to come the two victims so he died. came to the home to confront the two victims, right? Mm -hmm. Now we just read that he that is soon angry dealing foolishly and a man of wicked and, and wicked devices is hated. That's right. So before he even got there, he was thinking about what I'm going to do when I get there. That's right. Because he had time to go over there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and finish reading. About them coming over to his home earlier fr Friday evening. Okay, so what did it say? He said he went over there to confront them about these two guys coming over to his house earlier Friday. So he had time to think about this. Mm -hmm. He had time to marinate on this. Go ahead. Friday evening. Friday evening to assist his child's mother in taking his child from him. Uh -huh. Prior says that conf confrontation led to an argument. Oh, it led to an argument. Mm -hmm. There we go. Somebody get angry. Not knowing the whole that tone. All somebody all they had to do is be quiet. Matter of fact, he shouldn't even went over there. See, when he went over there, he already had the, the intentions of, of shooting somebody because he took a gun with him. Well, I finish reading that, Nick. Which led to an argument. Which led to an argument. Really? Which led to an argument which resulted in multiple shots being fired. All right, so now it says that Edie is wanted on charges of murder, attempted murder, and possession of a weapon during the crime. So that's all I wanted y'all to see on that. Verse 19, and what is, verse 18, and what it say? Poverty and shame. Shall 18, be. 18. 14 and 18. The simple inherit folly. The simple inherit folly, uh huh. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So the prudent is the one that can sit back and assess the situation without making a bad decision like that. So clearly we see this young man didn't operate in no prudency at all. Instead of him use, using knowledge of discretion and then thinking about what would happen if he did that. He went off of his own emotions. He didn't bring his body into subjection. And that's what we got to do. 
even being in the truth. Because you don't bring it under subjection, then you get yourself into sin, and more is required of you. But if you teach your kids at a young age, that's right. when situations like this arise, they know how to deal with it. Where we at? We just finished that. All right, let's go over to 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 10. Second Timothy 3 and verse 10. And go ahead. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Uh-huh. Manner of life. Go ahead. Purpose. Come on. Faith. Uh-huh. Long suffering. Go ahead. Charity. Go ahead. Patience. Persecutions. Afflictions. Which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, mm -hmm. at Lystra, mm -hmm. or persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. And that's what we gotta understand, brother. So we're gonna go through persecution while we here, you know, teaching the word of God while we trying to live this thing, while we keeping the Sabbath and the world and worshiping on Sunday. We're going to go through persecution. They was going through it back then. Christ was persecuted. That's right. But you got to keep that tongue under subjection. So we just give him an example. Paul, he went through the same thing, but he said the Lord delivered him. The Lord delivered me out of, out of all of those temptations he went through. And he'll do the same for you all. Go ahead, read. Where you at? 12. Go ahead. Yay. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So we're going to go through persecution. We're going to go through mockery. Oh, you an Israelite. So why you ain't in Israel? You ain't no Israelite. You don't know what you did. And then you just want, you want to respond. But you just, you just have to walk away. You just got to keep your tongue. Because sometimes that tongue, man, it, it, it can go a little farther than you, you think it can. Especially as men. You know, everybody trying to prove, it, prove there ain't no punk you dealing with this book out there. And them, them boys out there in them southern churches, man, boy, they serious about their ignorance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they serious about their ignorance. The most of them serious about their ignorance. They serious about their ignorance, man. So you, you got to know just know how to walk away. Know how to walk away. That's right. Just let it go. But we're going to go through temp, uh, uh, temptation. We're going to go through ridicule. People laughing at us, talking about us. Go ahead and read. 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse uh -huh. and worse, Go ahead. deceiving and being deceived. And that's what's going on. They're waxing worse and worse every day. they deceiving and they being deceived. they bring bringing forth things that have nothing to do with the book, but they think they're doing it right. They're being right. deceived. That's right. And they're deceiving the world. That's right. But we're getting enlightened. We're getting enlightened. Go ahead and read. 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continue the things which you have learned. And has been assured of. Uh huh. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Go ahead. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Uh huh. Which are able to make thee wise yeah, in the able salvation. Able to make thee wise in the salvation. Go ahead. Through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Uh huh. All Scriptures. Some given, Scripture. All Scripture. Some Scripture. All Scripture. You sure say that? All Scripture. So that means we can use the Scripture for anything we got. <laughs> Any problems in our house, go to the book. Anger with your brother, go to the book. That's right. Anger with your sister, go to the book. That's right. It say all scripture is what? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Come on. And it's profitable for doctrine. Profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. Uh huh. For instruction in righteousness. Come on. For what now? That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect. And that's what we trying to achieve. We trying to become perfect. As long as we're in the flesh, we're going we to slip up here and there. But don't make that an excuse for you to keep on doing that. <laughs> All right, because the Lord said, I'm weary with your, uh, with your repentance. Isn't that what he said? Jeremiah, I'm weary with your repentance. So you repent and you turn right back around and do the same thing. <laughs> but we try to work toward perfection. That's right. So the more and more you keep this word of God inside you, the more and more you start dealing with issues, the more and more you start learning how to solve those problems. That's right. You, you start learning how to deal with each other. You start learning how to talk to people in the streets and in, in the world. How to deal with your coworkers. Some of us got evil eyes, man. I ain't gonna lie, I'm one of them. <laughs> and I ain't talking about evil eyes, jealous. I'm talking about, oh, man, you, man, I ain't, boy, y'all ignorant. Y'all They got bitter sin. That ain't how we supposed to be, man. We supposed to give everybody a chance. That's give right. them a chance. You can't just cut them off, man. And that's what I mean when I say evil. I'm talking about cut them off. Don't even want to have no time to even talk to them about the book because they, when they open their mouth, 
It's just nothing but vomit coming out, so I don't even want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But it was, it, I mean, it was, it was, that was a time that we were the same way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to talk to us. Somebody had to spend time in, in the Word of God and study and put it up on videos and YouTube so we can get it. That's right. We didn't just wake up one morning and say we got answers. Now, no, we sought out. And it was somebody who had put in time and took the time to record the lesson and put them on YouTube. A live stream for us to get to understand. We weren't always, we weren't always where we had in this gospel. We still learning. That's right. So that's why I'm saying I had it either. I just didn't, I don't I ain't want to see y'all, I don't want to talk to you. You know, but I'm, I'm working on that. Praise the Lord. I'm getting that better because I'm realizing the more and more I, I, the more and more the Lord allowed me to grow in the Word of God, the more and more I see that this Lord got the veil on these people, man. And if man, if the Lord don't open up their eyes, ain't nothing you can do. This is something that the Lord put on people. Mm -hmm. He has blinded the minds of these people, mm -hmm. so we got to understand that when we dealing with them and their ignorance. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished thoroughly, unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now let's go over to Matthew 10 and 34. Because we just saw that we're going to suffer persecution. Let's go look at one of the places where it's going to come from first. Because when you know this and you understand that it's going to come from people that you care about, then you're already prepared when you get in this situation. Matthew 10 and 34. And what does it say, brother? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. He said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Go ahead. I came not to send peace but a sword. But a sword. So that sword is the word of God. That's what he came to send. Go ahead and read. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. I have come to set a man at variance against his father. And the daughter against her mother. Uh-huh. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Right, so this is something that the Lord is doing. Mm -hmm. So this is why you can't be so quick to snap. When they start asking you questions, why y'all doing this? What is it? What is this for? What is the feast of unleavened bread? What is all that? <laughs> you in a coat. The Lord said I came to set them at parents. So we have to understand that we have to realize that and keep the tongue under control because your walk is what's going to get them to come in. That's right. You being consistent on keeping the word of God. You being consistent on keeping the Sabbath day and the high holy days like you commanded us is what's going to get them to question you. But you cutting them off and, and, and saying bad things about what it is they do, all you do is run them away. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people now starting to, starting to call with questions. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Who, who first, when I first came to who I did, but I just I chopped them up. You know, I mean, but I thank the Lord that they're still around. You know, so they can ask me questions now. But I know a couple, of, what, about three, three, four years ago, I know that I, I just was completely cutting their doctrine. I ain't want to hear nothing. Well, if you ain't doing what the book say, then you're absolutely wrong, period. Right. Then nobody want to hear it, man. Don't nobody want to talk to you like that. Go ahead and read. 36. Uh-huh. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Right, so this is where your enemy's going to come from. Mm -hmm. A man's foe is going to be of your own household. Go ahead and read. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Uh-huh. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Go ahead. And he that taketh not his cross mm -hmm. and followeth after me is not worthy of me. That means you got to go through something, brothers and sisters. But during this time we going through something, you bearing your cross, man, be temperate. Be patient. Keep your tongue. And ask the Lord to, to deliver you and bring you out of the situation that you're going to be going through. That's why he said he that what? Uh, uh, where we at? 38? He yes, that taketh not his cross, that cross represents you bearing something. That's right. Going through something. Go ahead and read. That's it on that? That's it on that. So let's go over to Matthew 12 and 33. Matthew 12 and 33. Let's do it. Go ahead and read. They, they were talking to the Lord, man. Pharisees and Sadducees. Go ahead and read. 33. 33. Either make the tree good uh -huh. and his fruit good. Go ahead. Or else make the tree corrupt uh -huh. and his fruit corrupt. Go ahead. For the tree is known by his fruit. For the tree, and that's how you guys know. That's how we know by, the, by, by our fruit. We know by a conversation. We know if we if people coming in, you know, and people flocking to us, and we running people off. Can't talk to them. You can't have a conversation with them. You can't talk to them with them. So I always is where to have it. It shouldn't be like that. 
It shouldn't be like that at all That's for right. any of us. We know by our fruit. Go ahead, read. 34. O generation of vipers, uh -huh. how can ye, being evil, speak good things? So how can you be evil, being evil, speak good things? Mm. How is it that you, you sleeping around and you committing adultery and you robbing and stealing and you speak good things? Mm. That's the opposite of what the fruit that's bearing. That's right. Go ahead and read. For out, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever's in that mind, <clears throat> whatever you set on, that's what's coming out your mouth. That's right. Go ahead and read. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth huh? forth good things. That's right. Go ahead. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Come on. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of a judgment. So watch what you say to people, man. Watch what you say to people. Not just in offense, but also with the word of God. If you say something in this word of God and you're wrong, and somebody come correct you, then stand correct. That's right. Mm -hmm. Stand correct, because I, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people don't like to be corrected. They feel like I've been in the word 20 years. Well, just like the Lord showed you something, he can show somebody else something. That's right. And then if that brother go back and the precept upon precept, and the Lord gave him that, when the Lord gives somebody something, that brother ain't going to move off what the Lord gave him. That's right. That's right. So if you, done, uh, you thought you knew something, and somebody come bring it to you, because you done spoke it, uh, uh, you done said it out of the word of God, and this brother sees something different, and he come to you, and you understand you're wrong, then correct yourself. Because mm -hmm. you're going to give account for what it is you talk, for what it is you say, for what it is, uh, how you treat people. Every idle word, man, should give an account for in the day of judgment. Come on, read. 37. For by the words thou shalt be justified. For by your words you're going to be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's right, brother and sister. So make sure you always remember that. Everything is being recorded. Just because you don't see somebody with a pen writing everything down, it's being recorded. That's right. It's being recorded. We got the best memory card ever created. It's called a memory right here, a mind. Mm -hmm. That when you stand before the Lord in the day of judgment, hopefully we ain't got to do that. But he's going to turn it on and going to show you everything you've done. Why you are going to the lake of fire or why you going to the kingdom. If you stand before the Lord during the day of judgment, the odds are very slim that you get into the kingdom. I'm not saying that. It ain't going to happen. I'm just saying that hopefully your works your good works out where your bad works at that time. That's right. <clears throat> Colossians 5, 3. Colossians, go with Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 5. We are risen with Christ, and what are we supposed to do? Go and pick it up in verse 5 and come on. Mortify, the, mortify therefore your members which yeah. are upon the earth. Let's kill your members which are upon the earth. Go ahead. Fornication. Mm -hmm. Uncleanness. Go ahead. Inordinate infection. Inordinate infection. Go ahead. Even con con even con con concupiscence. concupiscence. Uh -huh. <laughs> and covetousness. Go ahead. Which is adultery. Uh -huh. For which things sake the work, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That's right. Go ahead. And the which he also walked some time mm -hmm. when he lived in them. That's right. So, so now what he did, what just happened was he was giving, giving them an example of what they need to put off. You know, the fornication, the uncleanness, inordinate affection. You know what that is. Um, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. So those are physical things that we have to put off. But also, he's going to go here in verse 8 and include some things that can also be done spiritually that people can't see. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. And the which ye also walked some time, which uh -huh. ye lived in them. But now do what? But now, but now ye also put off all these. Put off all these. Anger. Anger. Wrath. That's the first one he said, didn't it? Anger. anger. Mm -hmm. Put the anger off. Get rid of the anger. Go ahead. Wrath. Uh-huh. Malice. Go ahead. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Filthy communication. Uh-huh. Out of your mouth. That's right. So if you're saying something that's incorrect, that's a part of filthy communication. Mm -hmm. Not just cussing. Lying is also fit to communication. That's right. Go ahead. Lie not one to another. Well, that's good. That's it on that. So let's go to Titus 3.
Titus 3, and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers. Uh -huh. To obey magistrates. Go ahead. To, to be ready to every good work. Uh -huh. To speak evil of no man. And that's the same for us today now. Speak evil of no man. Go ahead. To be no brawlers. Uh -huh. No brawlers. But gentle. But gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. That's what we got to do, brothers and brother. sisters. Show meekness to all men. Come on. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. So we used to be this way. Mm -hmm. Disobedient, uh -huh. dis deceived, Go ahead. serving divers, divers lusts uh -huh. and pleasures, Go ahead. living in malice and uh -huh. envy, Go hateful, hateful, and hating one another. And that's what we got to put off. It ain't, it's not good to live like that, brothers and sisters, especially not, not, not if we supposed to be Israel. Mm -hmm. We supposed to be the ones that set the example. We shouldn't be the ones where you come through the church and everybody getting hugs and kisses and talking about each other back. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be carrying ourselves like that. Man. That is not how we're supposed to be doing it. When we come through the doors to serve the Lord, man, it should be genuine love, man. That's right. It should be genuine love. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we know I'm hugging the sisters, hugging the brothers, and at the same time we pull to the side and we have a conversation about it? Mm -hmm. That's right. The Lord record everything that come out your mouth. That's right. If you jealous and envious somebody, the Lord know that. The Lord know your heart. Mm -hmm. And your fruit going to be a record of it. Your actions going to show how it is that you really feel about somebody. That's right. If you're willing to go that extra mile to, to, to uh, uh, save that relationship, or if you're just really willing to let it go, that means you didn't care about him in the first place. That's right. So your hugging and kissing was like the kiss of Judas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I right, bro? That's right. Just like the kiss of Judas. That's right. Might as well be. In vain. In vain. Go ahead and read, brother. Go ahead. Is that it on that? Four. Go ahead. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. All right, brother, and that's it. But after that, the kindness of, and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. And that's how we got to have our love toward man. That's right. The same way Christ had a love toward us, that's how we're supposed to be toward everybody else. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, it ain't our job to sit up there and keep beating a dead horse. Our job is to keep moving forward in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's our job. And then as they see your walk, as you're moving forward in righteousness, believe me, they going to get convicted. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to live by the book. Mm -hmm. If they're not trying to live by the book, then you know what you have to do? You have to separate yourself from them. That's right. You got to separate yourself from them. How can two walk together unless they agree? They can't. Mm -hmm. They can't walk together unless they agree. So you have to separate yourself. Let's go to James. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 7. Let me tell you. Go ahead and read. James chapter 5, verse 7. Come on. Be patient, therefore, uh -huh. brethren, until the coming of the Lord. And that's what I say to you all today. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. Keep all these things in line. Keeping anger off, keeping wrath off, keeping malice off, blasphemy, filthy communication, and be patient to the coming of the Lord. We just saw that we're going to do persecution. We're going to get angry. What the book said, do what? Be angry and what? Say yeah. not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That's right. Go ahead and read, brother. Behold, uh -huh. the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth. That's right. And hath long patience for it. Uh huh. Until he received the early and latter rain. So what are we supposed to do? Verse 8. Be ye also patient. So we also, we supposed to also be patient. Go ahead. Establish your hearts. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth near. That's right, brother. So the Lord is getting ready to come back soon. That's right. So don't run this race. And then you almost get to the finish line and you jump off the track. Mm -hmm. Or you stop and get tired like the hare and the tortoise in the turtle. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Run this race and take your time running this race. Now I'm not saying take your time and say, well, I get it when I want to get it. But I'm saying be mindful of what it is you're doing as you're running this race. Mm -hmm. Making sure you ain't offending nobody. Making sure you ain't talking about nobody. Making sure you ain't uh, uh, blaspheming and backstabbing each other. 
Making sure we ain't taking situations and letting them ferment and get worse and worse and worse. You running this race consciously, paying attention to what it is you're doing. Like we ran that race, like we did a, a couple months ago when we, when we went up to the park and ran, where we walked around the thing. We was, some brothers was competing, I ain't gonna lie, we was competing. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not gonna mention it where it was, but I'm just saying, we brothers had came together to go around the park and uh, I think it was like five miles. And uh, so I paced it out real smooth. I paced it real smooth. I said, okay, everybody walking right now. So we all walking. Everybody walking. And you see a couple of brothers, they start moving to the front. Once we get to like the last, last two miles, they passing everybody. And I see them, they starting to, they starting to run and stuff. I said, when we get that last mile, I'm going to just take off. I walked the whole way. Me and another brother, we just walking the whole way. The whole time I'm walking, I'm playing it out real smooth. I'm watching because I'm saving energy, conserving energy. You know what I'm saying? Making sure my feet don't hurt enough. But I see everybody going to the front. Once we get to last mile, everybody getting tired. And last mile, I took off, came in first, and left everybody like 10 minutes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying to you all, brothers and sisters. As we take this race, as we run this race, make sure you measure out all your steps wisely so we can make it to the finish line. Right. You don't want to get all the way there and your righteous don't be regarded for nothing. Mm. Right. Yeah. And one of the things we got to do, we got to make sure we put this anger off. Is that it on that? Verse 9. Go ahead. Grudge not one against another. Grudge not one against another. Brother, unless ye be condemned. Uh-huh. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. That's right. Go ahead. Take my brethren, uh -huh. the prophets, Go ahead. who have spoken in the name of the Lord, uh -huh. for an example of suffering and affliction. Right, so take the prophets for an example of suffering and affliction. They went through all this. They did some bad stuff to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. They went through a lot of stuff, so take the examples of them. Go ahead and read. Suffering and affliction, uh -huh. end of patience. End of patience, go ahead. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Right, those that endure, we count them happy. Go ahead. You have heard of the patience of Job. You've heard the patience of Job. And have seen the end of the Lord. Uh-huh. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Go ahead. But above all things, my brother, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth. No, don't swear by, like I say, swear neither by heaven, neither by earth, but do what? Neither by any other. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Let your yea be yea. Let your yea be yea. And your nay, nay. Uh-huh. Lest she fall into condemnation. That's right. Go ahead. Is any... I is, think that's it on that. Let your yea be yea, your nay be nay. If you and your brother, y'all got an issue, and y'all say it's over with, it's over with. Let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. Don't swear by the earth and nothing like that. Whatever it is, whether it's issue or not, if you say you're going to do something, let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. If the book is good for doctrine, correction, reproof on the start of business, let's look at the book. That's right. Right? That's right. Because I ain't got to worry about you going out here blowing the money because your yay going to be yay and your nay going to be nay. Right? That's right. Every month I'm going to do this, man. Every month I'm going to do this. But if you living by the book, then I ain't got to worry about brothers and bodies, you know, taking off on us. That's right. Right? right. right. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. But it also said in verse 11, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard the patience of Job. And everybody heard the patience of Job. That's right. And how he endured. But well, let's go look at Job. Let's go over to Job chapter 2. Let's take a brief look at Job. A brief look at Job, right quick. Let's okay. Job chapter 2. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Job 2 and 1. Uh huh. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And he's talking about angels, not man. And Go Satan ahead. came also and among Satan them. Satan came also among them. Go ahead. To present himself before the Lord. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there is none like him in the earth? Go ahead. A perfect and upright man. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God uh -huh. and escheweth evil. Go ahead. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him mm -hmm. to destroy him without cause. Go ahead. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Mm -hmm. But put his bone in his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So he told him, touch him, and he going to curse you to your face. 
So we see that the Lord gave him to, uh, permission to put his hands on him. Now he done, he got covered from the foot to the crown of his head with balls. And let's see what his wife said in verse 9. And come on. Then said his wife unto him, uh -huh. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Do you still retain your integrity? It's coming from his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Curse God and die. What did he say? What did she say? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. What did he tell her? But he said unto her, uh -huh. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women you speak. speak as mm -hmm. one of the foolish women speak. Mm -hmm. what? Retaining his integrity. Go ahead and read. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Uh huh. And shall we not receive evil? Go ahead. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. And that's what we got to be careful of. Don't sin with your lips. Praise the Lord, man. You can't sin with your lips, man. I, I got understanding on that earlier. <laughs> you, can't, you can't sin with your lips. <laughs> oh, man. Because you can cause offense on somebody. And once you cause offense, now you're stepping in the sink. That's right. And also, don't speak against the Lord when you're going through different trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing against the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, for now, you see it another day. The Lord, bring out this thing. We're going to see that. Go ahead, read, bro. 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, mm -hmm. they came every one from his own place. Go ahead. Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuite, and Zophar, the Naamathite. Okay, well, they, let's, let's sit on that. Let's sit on that. I want to go over to Job uh, 42. So we see that he cursed and got the boys on him. Wife telling him to curse, curse God and die. We see that it happened, but he also was saying, he was, he was, he was doing some questioning during the time he was going through this, but he still didn't sin against the Lord with his lips. But he, he was definitely doing some questions. And, you know, the Lord got off on him and asked him where you was at when I created all this stuff. Basically, who you think you are? You know, so he had to get him a check. But we ain't, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't y'all try that. Don't you get in a situation where you start questioning the Lord and, <laughs> don't, don't do that, brother and sister. All right? So, Psalm 42, I'm picking up at verse 7. And it was so. Uh -huh. After the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, Go ahead. the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, uh -huh. My wrath is kindled against them, and against thy two friends. Right, so he said, my, The Lord said, My wrath is kindled against them and your two friends. Go ahead, read. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, uh -huh. as my servant Job has. So, you know what you better do? If y'all got friends that ain't speaking good of the Lord, or they ain't speaking, speaking according to this book, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Get rid of them. That's right. Go ahead and read. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, uh -huh. and go to my servant Job. Go to my servant Job. And offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. Uh -huh. And my servant Job shall pray for you. Go ahead. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly. Right. So, he, go ahead. And that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right. Like my servant Job. Like my servant Job. So Job is the one that was cursed, but he still kept his temper. Mm -hmm. He still didn't get angry and start cursing the Lord. Matter of fact, he set his wife in line. And now the Lord telling you, him, telling these guys to go before Job and I'm going to accept his prayer because y'all didn't speak right to me. Mm -hmm. So even doing what he was going through, he still stayed right. But let's see the latter end of this. Verse 12, and come on. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. That's right. Go ahead. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels, uh -huh. and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-asses. Mm -hmm. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Drop down to verse 16. After this? 15. 15. Come on. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. Uh -huh. And their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. Go ahead. After this lived Job in 140 years, uh -huh. and saw his sons he and his sons' son, sons, and his sons' sons, even four generations. Even four generations after the Lord put this on him, allowed Satan to touch him, he turned around and blessed him to see the generations after that. Mm. Then his daughter were the fairest in all the land. Because he didn't make a decision to curse the Lord. That's because right. he didn't make a decision to get angry. That's right. And just like that, brother and sister, we trying to wait to the latter end. We trying to get reward at the end of this thing. So whatever we going through, no matter who it be with, keep your tongue. Keep your anger under control. Because you're not trying to get a reward like we read earlier. They seeking a corruptible, a corruptible crime. Mm -hmm. That ain't what we seeking. We trying to get an incorruptible crime. That's right. Go and finish that. So Job died. So Job died. Being old and full of days. Being old and full of days. Wow. Alright, so that's it. On that. Let's go to 2 Peter. Second Peter one. It's 
2 Peter 1 and chapter 4. Can you get it, brother? Go ahead with it. Whereby are given unto us, it's chapter Peter 1, 1 and 4. Mm -hmm. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That's right. So that's what we're given great and precious promises. Go ahead. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, uh -huh. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's right. And beside this, giving all diligence, uh -huh. add to your faith virtue. Add to your faith virtue. Go ahead. And to virtue knowledge. And virtue knowledge. So I'm going to do something for a second. I told you going to do something a little different. Now. That's what we had a board here for. Okay. I want to get y'all involved, okay? We, we, we're, not, we're not a traditional church, right? Like we, we serve the Lord the right way. Correct. We're not going to sin if I'm asking y'all a question. Correct. All right? So what I want to do is, can somebody give me the definition of virtue? Uh, or just give me one word that's going to cover virtue. Submissive. Submissive. That's why I'm doing this. Submissive. Okay. Now, and I'm going to put the word up from the definition that I got. Honestly. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. So you say submissive, right? All right. And what, we, what I'm trying to do is we're trying to see if these match up. Because if they don't match up, then when we're reading this, we don't understand what we read. Okay? That's why I'm going to get y'all involved to see what we understand what we read. Because I didn't understand it until I looked in it today. I mean, we see it to sound all good and stuff, but when you actually look at the word and see what it means, then it brings on a totally different understanding. All right, so the next one is what, brother? Uh, Tobias? Six. Mm -hmm. And to knowledge temperance. And to knowledge temperance. So first it says, add to your faith virtue, right? Mm -hmm. And to virtue what? Knowledge. Knowledge, right? So somebody give me knowledge. Wisdom. Wisdom. Understanding. Bingo. All right. So somebody said wisdom, right? And then I think the key is, I think you understand it. Understand it. Let's see here. The fact or state of knowing. I think the understanding would probably be more than that, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Think so? Okay. All right, cool. All right, now the next one is what? After knowledge is what? Six. Into mm -hmm. knowledge, temperance. Knowledge, temperance, right? All right, so what's different, guys? Patience. Self-control. Self-control. Mm -hmm. Patience. Those are, those are all. Let's see here. See, we're matching up here. Restraint. Avoidance. Who said self-control? Somebody said self-control? Self-control. That's what it is. Moderation. Um, mm -hmm. Restraint. Yeah, that was self-control. Yeah, that was definitely following self-control. I think B would probably fall on the patient. Like uh, another one, I don't think it's close as self-control. I know this market's not working good. All right, so what's after patience? And to temperance, patience. And to temperance, patience, right? Mm -hmm. That was the next one in life, mm -hmm. patience. All right, so patience. Calm, relaxed. Calm, relaxed. What up? what you think? Long suffering. Long suffering. Yeah. That's good. Long That's real good. <laughs> That's the best one. Long suffering. Able to endure provocation or noise. Long suffering. Pain with calm and strength. Long suffering. Really long suffering. All right. So now, come again. What, what's after that? Into patience, godliness. Into patience, godliness. What is godliness? Love. Righteous. Righteous. Come on, those are all good, you know, answers. I mean, those, those are all, those are safe answers. Come on. All right, give me some. Perfection. Perfection, okay, let's see here. Okay, cleanliness. Devoted to divine worship or devoted to God. So perfection is a good one. Because we know he's perfect. Um, if, you're, if you're not clean, you can't be perfect, so. All right, what's the last one under there? Into godliness, brotherly kindness. So what is a brotherly kindness? Love. Huh? Love. What? 
Love. 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 Treat your brother the way you want to be treated. These are the same answers. <laughs> <laughs> love. Treat your brother the way you want to be treated. Everything is love. God is love. Okay. What is the virtue of love? Jesus <laughs> love. Jesus love. love too. <laughs> That's right. Jesus right. love. So what? 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 The kind. I, I don't know. I, I looked at a definition on it, and it said love and believe is like family. Mm -hmm. So, so, and the reason I did this. So now what we do is, now let's go. We we'll go back and read it again. That way we can have a better understanding on this. All right. So first one, first off, is virtue, submissive. Yeah, one more. Uh, which one? Into verbal and kindness, uh -huh. charity. Okay, because it's right next to it. Yeah, charity, okay. love. And we know charity is love. So virtue, submissive, more excellence, knowledge, wisdom and understanding, temperance, self-control. That's very important, brothers, is self-control. Uh -huh. Okay, that stop, that, that'll stop a lot of arguments, a lot of fights and disagreement. Self-control, all right? Patience, long-suffering, godliness, perfected cleanliness, perfected or cleanliness, and brotherly kindness, loving believers like family. Okay? That's right. So now when y'all read it from now on, make sure y'all can understand what you're reading now. Okay. So go ahead and read that from the top, brother, again. Bring it back. Let me start all over? Yeah, and that, where we just started, yeah. Let's start over. Okay. Whereby are given four. Peter four. Uh-huh. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Mm -hmm. And by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Oh, yeah. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Uh-huh. And beside this, Giving all diligence. Go ahead. Add to your faith virtue. So add to your faith virtue. And to virtue. More knowledge. excellence. Knowledge. Understanding. Wisdom. Go ahead. And to knowledge. Temperance. Uh huh. Patience. Long suffering. Right? What did it say? Uh, Self-control. Temperance. Go ahead. And to temperance. Patience. Uh huh. And long to patience. Suffering. Go ahead. And to patience. Godliness. Godliness. Perfected. Cleanliness. Go ahead. And to godliness. Brotherly kindness. Loving. Believers like family. Go ahead. Into brotherly kindness, charity. Into brotherly kindness, charity, brothers. Is that it on that? That's what I tell you, right? Go ahead, read. Keep For it. if these things be in you uh -huh. and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor uh -huh. unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, so if these things be in you, then you're going to bear fruit. You know what I'm saying? This, gonna, this, this is what's going to come out. Then you're going to draw people. People don't want to be around. You know what I'm saying? I understand sometimes we get caught up in gossip, but people really don't want to be a part of it. That stuff be vexing people's spirit. That's true. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to be around that. Mm -hmm. Hence why we're here today. Amen. Amen to that. So, keep reading, bro. Nine. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Uh huh. And cannot see afar off. So he that lacketh lack these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Go ahead. And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That's right. So that's what we got to make sure we don't forget that we used to be this way. Uh -huh. You forget that you've uh, been purged from your old sin. And we carry ourselves back in the same way. That's right. Go ahead and read. Ten. Wherefore the rather, brethren, uh -huh. give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You want to do what? Make your what? Calling and election sure. So you want to make your calling and your election sure, brother and sister. Make it sure by doing these things. Go ahead and read. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. That's fall. Right, never fall. So let's go over to... Uh, First Timothy. First Timothy three. And the reason why I want to go here, because a lot of brothers de uh, desire to teach the word of God, but there's a standard that we have to that, that we have to set. We have to set an example, but not just us. Even the, the elders in the church, the brothers who ain't teaching, mm -hmm. they got standards they got to live by too. Mm -hmm. and we need to look at them. We have to look at them. First Timothy three and one. What is that, bro? This is true. This is a true saying. Uh huh. If a man desire the office of a bishop, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth the good work. That's right. Go ahead. A bishop then must be blameless. Got to be blameless. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. Vigilant. Vigilant. Sober. Uh huh. Of good behavior. Of good behavior. Go ahead. Given to hospitality. Uh huh. Apt to teach. Apt to teach. Go ahead. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. No striker. Not fighting and getting in trouble all the time. Not greedy or fifth looker. Uh huh. But patient. Not doing it for money. Fifth looker. Go ahead. But not patient. A, not a brawler. Not a brawler. Not covetous. That's right. So we can't have these characteristics teaching this gospel. We cannot have these characteristics trying to teach this word of God. So we got to make sure we look in the mirror and look at ourselves, man. Because we are representing the Lord. And if we fall short of this, but I don't care if you ain't teaching. 
If you're doing anything that represents the body of Christ, man, these things cannot be on us. That's right. Mm -hmm. These things can't be on us, man. We can't stand before the Lord like this. And the Lord is serious about loving one another. Serious. If he wasn't serious, he didn't have to come down here and die for us. That's a friend right there. That's somebody that cared about you. That's right, man. I'm just thinking he didn't have to come down here for us. But he did. Because that's how much he loved. So it shouldn't be no problem for us to make sure that our garments are not stained before we stand before the Father. It ain't hard. You just got to want to do it. You got to want to keep your mouth shut. Uh -huh. You got to want to tame that tongue. Mm -hmm. And you got to always think about the consequences if you don't. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, sometimes saying sorry can be a little too late depending on who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Depending on who you're dealing with. If everybody in this word of God like we are, man, you can say sorry to people and you can hurt them. They don't want to talk to you for 10 and 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So we have to be very, very careful. We've got to be very careful, man. Go ahead and read, brother. What four, four. Four, go ahead. One that ruleth well his own house. One that ruleth well his own house, and that's what we got to make sure that when people come in here and they see us, you know what I'm saying, they, they can't talk about nothing. Else. They can't talk about Tobias, DeMarcus, Brother Amos. And all the other brothers that come in behind us, we should be examples. That's right. We have to be examples. Not to say that we mean or we rude with an iron fist or nothing like that, but we fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if I was feeling the Lord, we're not gonna we're not gonna rule our house a certain way and, and, and treat our women like 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 dogs. Because that ain't how we supposed to treat them. That's right. Mm -hmm. We supposed to love our wives and cry on other, other church. Mm -hmm. Rule with our own house. So our kids gotta be in line. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that tongue gotta be under control. Mm -hmm. Cause that tongue, the, the tongue is sharp, man. It's sharp. I have I heard one of, uh, one of the elders say uh, stick, <laughs> that saying where they say sticks and stones they break my bones but words may never hurt me. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> one of the biggest lies I've been told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid I used to walk around saying that, but I always walk away. And, why do I feel like this though? Because mm -hmm. it hurts. Mm -hmm. and you know them, them words they can get implanted, man. Those words get implanted. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we dealing with the word mm -hmm. and it's getting planted in us? Mm -hmm. So when you say certain things to people. You know, you're not controlling your tongue to hurt people, man. They get implanted. And then sometimes, if they ain't got the word of God, they remember you by it. Let me tell you something. It is not easy to let things go at sundown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not easy. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we're dealing with letting things go at sundown. Imagine how the world deals with things when you come to, come to them and offend them. They don't, have, they don't live by it. They ain't under the law of this. Because they still got caught in mind. So by them still having a corner mind, you tell them, sorry, I ain't got nothing to do with you, man. I don't even want to talk to you. Come on. This man, how it is for us, when we're dealing with things at sundown, sometimes it can be hard. So we have to be mindful of how we not just deal with each other, but also people out in the world. Because you don't want to mess up a person possibly having a chance at salvation and they watching your walk. Mm -hmm. All right? So we're at verse 5. Who's in the middle of four, but I'm going to do four over. Okay, go ahead, brother. One that ruleth well his own house, uh -huh. having his children in subjection with all gravity. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, uh -huh. how shall he take care of the church of God? That's right. Mm -hmm. How are you going to take care of the church of God? He can't rule his own house. He can't rule his own house, the church is going to be out of way. That's right. Everybody's going to be out of control. That's right. That's why this position is very serious. Uh -huh. That's why you can't play with it, man. We got to make sure we lean our houses well. Go ahead, read, bro. Verse seven. Seven. Go ahead. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Right. So when people looking at you, man, they should be able to look at us and say, "Hey, every time they see it, man, they should be able to speak good of us. They should have nothing of us, man. Nothing. Nothing. Especially when you keep things inside the house, whether it be in your." House at home, your spiritual house, or your house at home with your family or the church, the body of Christ. But if everybody coming in doing what it is they're supposed to do, then it won't get out into the world. You get you, you, you deal with each other according to the Bible like you're supposed to do, then it won't get out into the world. And people can't talk bad about it because you corrected the situation. You brightened your tongue like you're supposed to. You went to your brother and your sister when you offended them. Go ahead and read, brother. Hey. Likewise, must the deacons be great. So the, de the deacons got to be great also. Mm -hmm. 
Not, yeah. not double tongue. Not double tongue. Not giving to much wine. Uh -huh. Not greedy of fifty lucre. Go ahead. Holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. Mm -hmm. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Uh -huh. Being found blameless. Go ahead. Even so must their wives be great. The wives must be great. Not slanderers. Uh huh. Sober. Go ahead. Faithful in all things. Go ahead. That the deacons be the husbands of one wife. That the deacons be the husband of one wife, just like the, the bishop. Go ahead. Ruling their children in their own house as well. That's right. So the same thing got to occur. So let's go over to Titus right quick. Like I said, these just basic class and things that we may forget, but as the Lord lead us into the direction we're going, things that we look at before we decide to go that route. Because we want this thing to be successful. Not because, like, like the brother say, it's big enough. It's big enough. And we can't have people coming in looking at us like they're looking at the world. And we shouldn't get, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have conversation with brothers telling, telling, saying to me, man, Israel, you like to sign the church? Yeah. That don't make no sense, man. That don't make no sense. I mean, you should be offended to hear that because we're supposed to be representing the Most High God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we got the same characteristic of the world. How is it that we represent the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we carrying ourselves the same exact way? Ain't no different. The only difference is we go to church on Saturday. That's the only difference. Yeah, that's right. We still backbiting. We still gossiping. We still talking about one another. And all that got to stop. Yeah. And all the congregations of Israel, because we're supposed to be the teachers. We're supposed to be the leaders. As me and my house, we would serve the Lord. Amen. Where we at, brother? <laughs> Where we at? Tied to two and one? Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Now, now speak the things which become sound doctrine. Go ahead. That the aged men be sober. The who? Aged men be sober. The aged men be sober. Grave. Uh huh. Temperate. Go ahead. Sound in faith. Go ahead. In charity. Uh huh. In patience. Go ahead. The aged women likewise. The aged women likewise. So they got to be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity and patience. Just like the man, go ahead. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Uh huh. Not false accusers. Go ahead. Not given to much wine. Uh huh. Teachers of good things. So not this right here, brothers and sisters. Sister Carol. Because I know you, you, you guys are our, our older ones. So we want y'all to read some of the things that the, you all are supposed to be doing. Come on up here. Stay right here. And let's read, and read this article. Because we had some for the kids, and now we got some for people around our age, what we supposed to be doing. Because uh -huh. we just saw in the book, it says, speak out of things which become good, become sound, and that the aged men be sober. And the women. Mm -hmm. So, 30 years from now, I shouldn't be hearing this about Brother Tobias and Sister Karen. <laughs> uh, uh, brother Nate and Sister Malia, or Brother Amos and Sister Tasha. We shouldn't be hearing this in no honor. Go ahead and read. <laughs> Go ahead and read this. Husband kills wife for huh? a gun on self. Go ahead. An alleged domestic argument turned deadly for an elderly couple. An argument. Mm -hmm. Dalton L. Holly, 84. 84. And his wife, Lola J. Holly, 76. 76. Wow. Both of 4300 County Road 15 South Point uh -huh. were found dead in their home Sunday evening by their daughter. Mm -hmm. The couple had been arguing throughout the day and at some point the male subject obtained a small caliber revolver and see that? shot his wife. They was arguing throughout the day? Mm -hmm. Arguing throughout the day? Mm -hmm. Now these are elderly people. Wow. Just like we saw the kids got, got, got out of control, we got elderly people doing the same thing. So this emotion of anger is on everybody. Mm -hmm. And you got to get it under control from a young man to an old man. Mm. Go ahead, read. Shot his wife in a back bedroom, Sheriff Jeff Lawless said. Uh -huh. Then he turned the weapon on himself. Go ahead. The sheriff's office was notified by the daughter at 5.30 p.m. Sunday. And what she said? She lived there but was not at home at the time, uh -huh. Lawless said. She had confirmed the argument. But she confirmed the argument, so that's mm -hmm. all I want you to do. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. But she confirmed the argument. <laughs> So they 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 carrying on just like the young ones are. But the books say that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and in patience. So we gotta exercise these even when we get 
to the latter days of, our, of, of, of us being in, in existence. That's right. 75, 76, 80. We can't be doing this. The book say live joyfully with the wife without you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh -huh. So go ahead, bring, I'll pick it up at verse 4. I just wanted y'all to see that because ain't nobody can escape this, this emotion of anger. Uh, can't nobody get out of this. And then once you let it fester, then it goes into other things. And that's what y'all don't want to do. You want to make sure you get anger, anger under control. Mm -hmm. That way you can move on. When the sun go down, let it go. Move on to the next thing. The next thing. They have an argument all day. No telling where it's still from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like the fight with the, the young man. When he walked up there and shot the, the two people and killed the one guy. Mm -hmm. So now you got one guy going to prison. One guy dead. Over some nonsense. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is discern. Go ahead and read, brother. Four. Mm -hmm. That they may teach the young women to be sober. That's right. Teach the young women to be sober because they're watching your actions. Go ahead, read. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. To love their children. Uh huh. To be discreet. To be discreet. Go yes. Ahead. Keepers at home. Uh huh. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Uh huh. That the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Go ahead. Young men likewise. Even the young men. The young men. These young boys that we got in here, as they come up. Mm -hmm. It says likewise. They got to be so also. We got to teach them the right way. Go ahead and read. Six. Uh -huh. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Uh -huh. And all things showing thy, showing thyself a pattern of good works. A pattern of good works. And doctrine showing uncorruptness, uh -huh. gravity, sincerity. That's right. Come on. Hey. Sound speech. Sound speech. That cannot be condemned. That cannot be condemned. Go ahead. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, uh -huh. having no evil thing to say of you. That's right. So on the outside, they're looking at you. They shouldn't have no evil thing to say of us. They shouldn't. And I'm telling you, man. Like, boy, I'm telling you, man. Why, why would I come to say, well, then, well, Nate, you got to tell them. That was an evil thing to say. I thought it was cool. That ain't cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? not cool. Nobody don't want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. I remember one time when I was heavy, uh, I don't really like talking about this, but when I was dealing with, you know, the, the music or whatever, they, I, I, had a, I had a deal on the table uh, when I was in Florida. And I was dealing with some millionaires. And they, uh, man, they was willing to go all the way with me, man. But my temper, my mouth, my be being spoiled, everything got to go my way. <laughs> they was just like, man, we use it as a write-off and we done. <laughs> not to say that I want to handle the Lord that, 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 that blessed me to be able not to be doing it anyway. But I'm just saying, I look back, man, my mouth and my temper caused me to lose that. So likewise, I learned from that, you know, we, as we go forward here, dealing with, dealing with each other, brothers and sisters in the Word of God, you know what I'm saying, and also the ventures that we may have to go off into, you know, as far as getting places and stuff like that, that tongue got to be bright. Mm -hmm. That tongue got to be bright. That attitude got to be on point. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, man, you deal with poor people, that'll go, that'll go, go a long way for you. Mm -hmm. I had a guy say that we can't. I shouldn't have charged y'all nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We came now. You seen the spirit we had in there, how we had fun and stuff like that. He said, I shouldn't have charged y'all nothing. I got a bookmark for next time. Wow. <laughs> 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 I got a bookmark for next time. Remember what you know. I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. Oh, man. I called him and told him, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come on and have a good time, man. Ain't nobody bothering us or nothing like that. You know, he made me feel comfortable because he asked us could him and his wife have some of the food we had. Mm -hmm. So when somebody do that, man, they felt, they felt welcome by our presence mm -hmm. in his own establishment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He came to me and said, you mind if me and my wife get some food? And I was like, man, y'all go ahead, man. Get, get much as you want, man. You know, so that made me feel good that, mm -hmm. to know that he was comfortable enough to, you know, come ask us for some of the things we brought over. Mm -hmm. That let, let, let me know that we gave off a positive vibe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't rowdy, we wasn't getting all crunk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we just having a good, joyous time, laughing and all that type of stuff, games and stuff. Yeah, the brothers getting into it on the table. Mm -hmm. We're having a good time, feasting before the Lord. And that's what it's supposed right. to be about. Amen. Amen. That's what it's supposed to be about. People are supposed to be on the outside and look at them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can't speak evil about us. When we left, they can't say nothing about us. Mm -hmm. Alright? So where we at, bro? Where we going to? We, uh, that's that's it. That? Yes, sir. Alright, so let's go over to first seven twenty-five. We want to go look at somebody. First Samuel 25. We'll pick it up at verse 2. We almost done. We got three more things, brother. 
Controlled anger of the lake of fire. First Samuel 25, and come on, bro. Verse 2. And there was a man in Malon uh -huh. whose possessions were in Carmel. Go ahead. And the man was very great. Uh -huh. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. Go ahead. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Right, so this man is pretty rich. Go ahead, read. 3. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Now the name of the man was Nabal, which means foolish one. Go ahead. And the name of his wife, Abigail. Uh huh. And she was a woman of good understanding. And she was a woman of good understanding. And she was. And we're going to see how she was of good understanding. Go ahead. And of a beautiful conscience. Uh huh. But the man was curlish and evil uh -huh. in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. That's right. So his conversation, he was evil. Nobody want to be around. Kept things stirred up. Go ahead, read. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. Uh -huh. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Go ahead. Get you up to Carmel uh -huh. and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And so he said, Greet him in my name. Go ahead. So they come and say, You know, I, hey, David sent us to come to you. So he tell him, Greet him in my name. And what, how are you going to greet him? Go ahead and read. Six. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in prosperity. He's going to say what? Peace be both of thee. Peace. Be both to thee, go ahead. And peace be to thine house. Uh huh. And peace be unto all that thou hast. So he coming in peace. David sent his men to go to him in peace. They ain't going to cause no trouble. He coming in peace. Well, let's see how Nabal is. Go ahead and read verse 7, brother. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Uh huh. Now thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not. Right, we didn't hurt the shepherds and nothing like that. Go ahead. Neither was there aught missing. Right, we didn't, take them. we didn't take them from you. None, none of them was missing. Go ahead. All the while they were in Carmel. Uh huh. Ask thy young men. Right. Ask your young men. Go ahead. And they will show you. And they'll show you. Go ahead. Wherefore let the young men find favor in thine eyes. Uh huh. For we come in a good day. Go ahead. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever come into thine hand and to thy servants, and to thy son David. Right. So they're coming in peace, and they say, Give, we pray thee. So they're asking them nice. So let's see what happens. Verse nine. And go ahead. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal, uh -huh. according to all those words in the name of David. Uh -huh. So they said everything David told them to say, and then they ceased. Verse 10, come on. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, What did he say? Who is David? Who is David? Man, who? David? Who is David? <laughs> come ahead and read, man. And who is the son of Jesse? Uh -huh. Who is the son of Jesse? What they got to do with me? <laughs> there be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. That's right here. There's a lot of people that, that leave away from their master. They come to me acting like they're somebody. <laughs> who is he? Who is David? <laughs> that really ain't nobody. Go ahead and read. Shall I then take my bread uh -huh. and my water Go ahead. and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men right. whom I know not whence they be? Right, so David, his men, as he, as he said this, David, men went back and came back and told David. So at this point, one of the young men went to go speak to Abigail and told her what happened. So pick it up at verse 14 and come on, let's see how the conversation went. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, uh -huh. saying, Behold, go ahead. David sent messengers out of the wilderness. So he telling Abigail, the woman that had good understanding, the young man is telling her, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to do what? To salute our master. And what did he do? And he railed on them. Man, he went off. <laughs> he went off on them. But we're going to see, man, keeping your mouth closed, you ain't got to say nothing because David want to get at him. But we're going to see here. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. But the men were very good unto us. Uh huh. And we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything. Go ahead. As long as we were cut. Con conversant with them mm -hmm. when we were in the fields. Go ahead. They were all they were a wall unto us yeah. both by night and day. That's right. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Uh huh. Now therefore know and now consider Go ahead. what thou would do. For evil is determined against our master. That's right. So they're coming against us now. So you better think about what you're gonna do, because they're coming against our master and us. Go ahead and read. And against all his house. And against all his house. For he is such a son of Belial, uh -huh. that a man cannot speak to him. A man can't what? Speak to him. Is that you all? <laughs> is that y'all? <laughs> Make sure if this is you all, you get this out of your life, man. You don't want to be where can't nobody talk to you. He is such that can't nobody speak to him. So he told her, you better think about what you need to do. So she prepared different, different foods for them, because they were coming to get him. They were when he got his man, was like, okay, let's, let's, let's go take care of him. So she was a wise woman. She got food and stuff prepared and stuff like that. So when David got there, the food was prepared. She came on behalf of her husband. He didn't even know she went to talk to him. So let's pick it up at verse 32. And let's see what took place from that point on. When she goes out there to meet David. Go ahead. 
And David said to Abigail, uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. Which sent thee this day to meet me. Praise the Lord. Hey, blessed be the Lord God that he sent you out here to meet me. Mm -hmm. What was going to take place? Go ahead. And blessed be thy advice. Uh huh. Because she gave him sound advice at that time. That's why she was a woman of good understanding. <coughs> Go ahead, read. And blessed be thou, uh -huh. which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood. So David was coming to shed blood. I sit there and talk to you. You keep me from shedding blood. Go ahead, read. And from avenging myself with mine own hand. Uh -huh. For in very deed, Go ahead. as the Lord God of Israel liveth, mm -hmm. which hath kept me back from hurting thee, Go ahead. except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, mm -hmm. surely there had not seen, excuse me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal, by the morning light, any of that pissed against the wall. It wasn't gonna be nothing left. They just finna take everything out. <laughs> wasn't gonna be nothing that pissed against the wall left. So he came through there letting her, letting her know I wasn't playing when I came through here. Why? Because of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Because of his mouth. Mm. And that's what I'm telling you, man, that tongue is that tongue is, is sharp, man. We gotta make sure we get out of control. But usually what comes off of that tongue is what's in the heart. Mm -hmm. And it all stems more than likely from anger. Mm -hmm. I am being cut today. I'm telling you. I ain't got no problem telling you I'm being cut. I'm talking about the bricks are falling. <laughs> Let them fall where they may, but I'm getting hit by a couple of them. <laughs> Man. I probably got a lot of hickeys on my head. I'm telling you. I'm getting hit by the word. <laughs> but you know, hey, praise the Lord, man. I can admit, you know what I'm saying? I got a problem with that, man. You know, because we're in the flesh. This thing we got to work on. Yeah. So go ahead and read, brother. Where you at? 35, come on. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him. Go ahead. And said unto her, uh -huh. Go up in peace to thine house. Go ahead. See, I have hearkened to thy voice mm -hmm. and have accepted thy person. Go ahead. So David went and sent up and told her to go up in peace. I've accepted thy person. So the gifts that she brought, you know what I'm saying? They stopped David from doing that. So the next day, but they were all, he getting drunk, having a good time, thinking he got away. Let's see what happened. Pick it up at verse 37. Come on. And Abigail came to Nabal. Uh huh. And behold, he held a feast in his house. Right, so he had a party. Go ahead. Like the feast of a king. Uh huh. And Nabal's heart was merry within him. Go ahead. For he was very drunken. Mm -hmm. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Right, so she didn't tell him why he didn't come do that. He just thinking it was of his own will. But he, she didn't say nothing until the morning. That's when she said something. Go ahead and read. 37. Mm -hmm. But it came to pass in the morning. Go ahead. When the wine was gone out of Nabal. He, 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 he done sobered up. Go ahead. And his wife had told him these things. Uh -huh. that his heart died within him. His heart died within him. Go ahead. And he became as a stone. And he became as a stone. 38. Go ahead. And it came to pass about 10 days after. What the Lord did? That the Lord smote Nabal. The Lord did what? Smote Nabal. That he died. That he died. 39 to read that for me. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, uh -huh. he said, Blessed be the Lord. That the Lord has did what? <laughs> That hath pleaded the cause of my reproach for the hand of Nabal. His reproach. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying to y'all. When we hold our tongue and get that anger, anger under control, the Lord will represent us. Mm -hmm. The Lord got our back. Just like he had David, man. David mm -hmm. didn't even have to touch him. The Lord took him out. Go and finish that, bro. And have kept his servant from evil. Uh -huh. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Uh -huh. And David sent and communed with Abigail. Go, he did what? David sent and communed with Abigail. And then what he did? To take her to him to wife. He got a cake and ice and too. <laughs> <laughs> he got a cake and ice and too. All of a sudden, that man would run his mouth, man. Got a cake and ice and too, man. Let's go to Galatians, uh, Proverbs 15 right quick. Proverbs 15, because this could have been a void, though. This could have been a void. Proverbs 15 and 1 in one verse. Hey, go ahead, brother. A soft answer turns away wrath. That's all he had to do. Mm -hmm. All he had to do was respond with a soft answer. Mm -hmm. All this stuff wouldn't even came on him. Mm -hmm. A soft answer turns away wrath. Go ahead. But grievous words stir up anger. And that's why we got to be careful how we treat one another. Mm -hmm. And the words are powerful, man. Mm -hmm. Words are powerful, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, boy, the whole time. I'm telling you, man, something came at me this week, man, dealing with this lesson. Because I think I told the brother, what, about, about a month ago? Now I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this last week, man. I mean, Satan, Satan, I, I don't know, I don't know he didn't want to go out, but I know I was getting, I was getting cut the whole week by this lesson, man. Because this thing is serious, man. And these, these, are, these are things that, that'll keep us on the right path. You know, like I say, uh, uh, start things off with anger, man, will cause you to sin. 
So when you just get anger, anger under control, get your tongue under control, and, and watch how it is you responding, mm -hmm. that'll stop a lot of wrath from going forth. So it says, soft as the tongue the away wrath, mm -hmm. but grievous words do what? Stir up anger. Stir up anger, brother. So, so let's go over to Galatians 5. We're going to see the flesh as opposed to the spirit. Look at these fruits of the spirit. And kind of line our lives up with the fruits of the spirit and make sure we are walking in that. Galatians 5 and 19. All right, go ahead and read, brother. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Uh-huh. Which are these? Go ahead. Adultery. Uh-huh. Fornication. Mm-hmm. Uncleanness, go ahead. Lasciviousness, right? Idolatry, witchcraft, mm -hmm. hatred, variance, emulations, wrath. Wrath. Y'all saw the word hatred too, right? Mm -hmm. Hatred, man. Those are that's those, those are subtle. Those are very subtle. You know, it started from you. It started from saying things. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, then it started getting more and more evolving into something else. Mm -hmm. But that's how Satan is. Very Satan, very subtle. And you start from you just like liking what somebody say. Next thing you know, it's going to something else. Mm -hmm. Then it turns into envy. Next thing you know, you, every time somebody say something, or this uh, a person says something that you mad at, you're always trying to uh, trying to find a way to undercut. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So true. That's what we got to be careful of. The hateful, the envious. We ain't supposed to be living like that, man. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be living like that. We supposed to be examples. Go ahead, read, bro. End of twenty. Uh -huh. Strife. Go ahead. Seditions. Uh huh. Heresies. Mm hmm. Envyings. Murders. Go ahead. Drunkenness. Revelings. And such like, of the which I tell you before, mm -hmm. as I have also told you in time past. That what? That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we can't get into the kingdom with no hatred and anger and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. We can't just think that the, the major physical things that everybody has found out about. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's right. That that's what's gonna cause me to go to hell. I hit the lake of fire. But no, the small things. Mm. The small things is what we have to pay attention to because the small things are the things that lead into these big things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. So we gotta watch the small things. And more than likely, every time, boy, it come from that tongue. Mm -hmm. That tongue, Bible, man. Boy, mm -hmm. I take. Go on, keep reading, bro. Well, these are works of the flesh. So where you at? 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now the fruit of the Spirit, so we got the, we got flesh, we got the Spirit. So we mm -hmm. just saw the, the workings of the flesh. So now let's see if our life lining up with the works of the Spirit. And if they're not, let's get them to line up with the works of the Spirit. So when people come and try to, you know, uh, uh, come to be a part of us in our fellowship, they see that we are lining up with these fruits of the Spirit. So go ahead and read, brother. 22. Uh -huh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. Joy. Go ahead. Peace. Go ahead. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. There it is. Gentleness. Gentleness. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Faith. Meekness. Go ahead. Temperance. Uh-huh. Against such there is no law. There is no law. Go ahead and read. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with afflictions, aff affections and lusts. That's right. So we crucified them. If we live in the Spirit, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's right, brother. Sister. Go ahead. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Uh huh. Provoking one another. That's right. Emmying one another. That's right, brother. Sister. So we got to get this off us, man. Mm -hmm. and if we have any of this that's on us, man, we have to get this off mm -hmm. us. Because we today, let's just turn over a new leaf, man. Turn over a new leaf, man. Like I, like I, I can say it a thousand times, we are all here for a reason. Mm -hmm. We did not just meet each other today. <laughs> Y'all know that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's try to put these in. Let's put these in our life and walk forward according to these. And um, we shouldn't, we, we, not to say that we ain't going to have some issues that come up. You know what I'm saying? But let's just deal according to the book. Let's deal according to the book. Let's go over to what's the This is the last place. Matthew 5 and 21. You finished that. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5 and 21. Matthew 5 and 21. You get it, brother, go ahead. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in anger, excuse me, shall be in danger of the judgment. That's right, go ahead. But I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Right, for some minor. 
Angry with your brother is something, man. Something that you could have let go at sundown. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You are angry with your brother without a call once that sun go down. Because once that sun go down, the issue's supposed to be dropped. Mm -hmm. So now you're going after the sundown, then it don't even affect the person that who offended you no more. Because whether that sun, when that sun go down, whether they come to you and apologize or not, the books say don't let the sun go down on your web. You do what you're supposed to do. Go to the brother. If he correct his issue, don't wait on no apology. If you don't, let it go. Don't keep letting that fester. Let it go. And we read that. Go ahead and read. Bill of 22. Uh huh. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. That means he worthless. He ain't no good. He ain't good for nothing. But we don't know what's in his heart, what's in his mind, what they trying to do. They probably can't be up to our standards. But the book says, whosoever shall say to his brother shall be in danger of the council. Go ahead. But whosoever shall say thou food shall be in what? Shall be in danger of hell. So all these are get you to let the fire, brother and sister. So you got to be mindful of how did we treat each other. How did we love our brothers and sisters? Because we got people watching us. And we also got the name of Christ attached to us. That's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's the best of brothers and sisters. Control the angle of the liquor fire. Hope somebody got some understanding. I thank you for your time.